So example 10 is you have this sphere and inside is some part of it that's cut out. Okay. And then a positive charge Q is placed somewhere inside that, that cavity. And notice it's not centered. We're not, we're not dealing with any kind of symmetry here. Okay. So uh, let's, let's work out what happens here. So we know the electric field inside the conductor is always zero. Let me just write that out just to remind ourselves. Okay, now what happens? Well, the, the charge accumulates negative equal and opposite on the inside surface there, right? So we have negative charges and that's all gonna be negative Q. Um, and so basically, you know, if, if we imagine the sphere blows up to the size of the universe, right? This negative charge, the field due to this negative charge plus the, the field due to this positive charge exactly cancel each out for all space, right? So if we ignore what's happening on the surface of the sphere, then the plus charge here and the minus charges here, basically it's zeroed out. It, it doesn't exist for anywhere else in the universe. Now the next part is kind of curious what happens. Um, and you might not buy what I'm going to argue here, but just for the sake of argument, let's go through it anyway. Now we have to have a plus Q because you know we have there's no net charge on this this conductor and the interesting thing is it's going to accumulate uniformly on the surface of the sphere such that it appears there's a plus q charge in the center of the sphere it, it appears so there isn't really but from the people on the outside of the sphere it looks like that charge is actually in the middle okay um how do we know that it's going to be like that well if it wasn't uniform then this field due to this outside surface would cause um, some kind of field on the inside of the conductor here. Um, another way to think about it is like, let's say we blow up that sphere to the size of the universe, it's like massive. Then the plus charge that accumulates on the surface of the sphere would be so far away from anything happening here that the effective uh, electric field would be zero, right? And when you condense this back down to size, even if you get very small and close to there, then the same, you know, it's, it's basically nothing changes from the out, for, as you get smaller and smaller. Um, and, and we're gonna prove later in chapter three of the uniqueness theorem, which says that any solution is the solution for these kinds of problems. So um, bottom line is, um, it, it's, uh, you should feel a bit uneasy with my explanation here. Um, and you won't really appreciate you know, the truth of this matter until you kind of see for yourself how that works together uh, with the uniqueness there. Anyway, thanks.